Join the conversation with Canada AM. Find us on Facebook or Twitter. Check out behind the scenes photos on Instagram and watch your favorite segments again on our website, canadaam.ctvnews.ca. Meet Flicka. She's a registered national service dog trained to help people with post-traumatic stress disorder. Flicka has been by Andrew Sprague's side for nearly three years now, helping him navigate day-to-day -day life. Andrew and Flicka join us in studio. Beautiful dog, incredible story behind not only the dog, but yourself in coming to the realization that you needed help. Tell me a little bit about your need and and when that when that became aware when you became aware yeah no, absolutely thank you for having us uh, on the show this morning um Flicka is a, a certified service dog from national service dogs they're a registered charity based in cambridge ontario they train dogs to help uh, children who have autism mm -hmm. and they also train them to um, to help people have post-traumatic stress disorder um, regrettably i have uh, ptsd and mine arises from uh, horrific um, childhood sexual abuse that i endured um, for most of my life i was able to sort of bury those memories uh, deep into my mind and uh, you know get on with my life and, and it was going great until in 2009 i sort of um, i hit a wall or as I like to say, I hit a trap door, and the trap door opened, and my life got turned upside down, and I got flooded with uh, just the hor horrific memories of that experience. And I've been trying now, what is it now, six years, to really, um, you know, get a handle on this. And so. Back in 2012, my my doctor, who's uh, been with since 2009, um, fantastic, had heard about this being used in the U.S. and it really wasn't a concept um, in, in Canada. The National Service yet. Dogs was just starting to do it, and so I approached National Service Dogs. The sort of it is since June 2013, I've had uh, Flick in my life, so almost three years, and she's been trained to help me with some of the symptoms that, that arise from PTSD. What what is the difference that she that she's made in your life? Yeah, so with PTSD, and it's the same for our first responders, for our war vets that are coming back, for people who have been sexually abused. It's sort of the symptoms are the same, and so it's um, you know a lack of a feeling of safety, um, having moments of having traumatic flashbacks of, of your traumatic experience. It's having night terrors you know that are much to much much deeper much worse than you know regular nightmares that people would have um so flick has been trained if i'm having a nightmare she and if i'm verbalizing my nightmare or if i'm you know lashing or during my nightmare she picks up on that and she'll she'll start to nudge me to sort of wake me up mm -hmm. and realize okay here we are um i know that we were showing some photos of flick you know lying with me because she sort of like picks up that okay he needs he needs me to sort of be there and right. uh, push him she helps create a bit of a physical space around uh, me particularly with our, our war vets when they come back they need sort of a bit of space you know particularly when they're in crowds so you the take dogs. flicka like, this is you know everywhere you go pretty much she's with me 24 you. hours a day seven days a week and at the times that i haven't taken her it's uh she's just at the front door waiting for me to return and i've got yeah. you know young children and she ignores everybody she's just waiting for, you know i guess you know um uh, foolishly devoted but but absolutely devoted and um yeah no she comes she comes everywhere and let me ask you about because you know there are some people aware that you know if people are visually impaired that they have you know seeing eye dogs is what we used to call them but they're service dogs in this case and she's a national service dog trained to do to help you mm -hmm. How, what should people know in terms of how to react and how not to react? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for dogs that are being used for people who are uh, have visual impairments, they're called guide dogs. And then for service dogs, they're being used for autism, diabetes, epilepsy, hearing impairment, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, the dog will wear a jacket. You can see, you know, Flicka has right. a jacket on it. Usually, will say, "I have a badge on it. Please don't pet me. I'm working." And and they always. Um, Somebody shouldn't go up to a, a service dog and you know start petting it or talking to it or even interacting with because it. Because the service dog is working. That's right, and it also, in some respects, it's disrespectful to the handler because you should be interacting with you know a human to human interaction and not sort of a human to canine interaction. Um, and awareness is really important because there are difficulties with regard to having a dog with you all the time in certain you know places, public or private or otherwise, where people just simply don't understand, and absolutely. the rules aren't necessarily all in your favor for transportation and whatnot. Actually, the rules. Are all, are all actually are all in my favor. The problem is people aren't aware of what. And that's what rules. I mean. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, I mean, in Ontario, it's the Ontario Human Rights Code. It's the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, 2005. So when you're talking about cabs and and buses and street and all of that, yes, the 
access as a service dog allowed on with you? That, that, that's correct. You know, to deny her access into a public facility or to deny me goods and services that you would be um, having access to is, is unlawful. Mm -hmm. And again, why I just, I, and this sort of blows my mind when this happens to me, what's, well, you know, why am I any different than anyone else? And why are you denying me services or why are you denying me to, you know, purchase something in your store it's solely because I have a service dog with me? It's just, you know, um, uh, you know, I think uh, through education, like this segment oh, we're doing right now, exactly, yeah. is we just got to keep, you know, telling people, look, these dogs, really, she's my shadow. She's with me all the time. It's not, people say to me, you're lucky to have your, you know, bring a dog with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there are a lot of days, and she's the first dog I've ever had. I've had to learn to work with her. There's a lot of days where it's sort of like, oh, I got to bring you with me. Yeah. I love her, yeah, but, yeah. but it's still. It really makes a difference. Um, it's great. Yeah. It's it's lovely to meet Flicka, and, and thank you for telling your story. My pleasure. Thank Take you. Care, Andrew. We'll have a link to the National Service Dogs on our website, canadaam.cdvnews.ca, coming up on the show in 15 minutes. The new app teaching teens how to use life-saving defibrillators.